God, I should have studied French when I was younger. <sighs> hey guys and gals, it's your buddy Drew with Living History's Mysteries and Ferocious Feline Productions. You know, a lot of people are familiar with the witch trials that took place in Salem, Massachusetts, or the huge trials that took place all over Northern Europe 500 years ago. But what about other places in the world? Today we're going to take a look at our neighbors to the north, Canada. Oh, Canada. And some of the stories of witches and the supernatural that helped to mold Canada what it is today. And some of the happenings that's still going on up there today. Pretty interesting. Check this out. This is good. Have you ever wondered if witches and the supernatural truly exist, even in a country as serene as Canada? In the land of maple leaves, poutine, and hockey, a darker history hides beneath the surface. A history filled with tales of witches and otherworldly happenings. A world where the supernatural isn't just fantasy, but a chilling reality. A world that has shaped the history of this peaceful nation in ways you may never have imagined. Join us as we delve into the eerie world of witches and the supernatural in Canada. Journey with us back to the 17th century, where the first whispers of witchcraft echoed through the Canadian wilderness. It was a time of exploration, of new beginnings, and of mystery. As European settlers began to carve out their lives in the untamed landscapes, tales of the supernatural started to seep into their communities. The origins of witchcraft in Canada can be traced back to these early days, as settlers brought with them age-old superstitions and beliefs from their homelands. The first recorded cases of witchcraft in Canada surfaced in the early 17th century, predominantly in the French colony of New France, now known as Quebec. These cases were often intertwined with the settlers' struggle to understand and adapt to their new environment. Fear of the unknown, coupled with cultural clashes with indigenous communities, fueled suspicions and accusations of witchcraft. One of the most significant events of this period was the 1647 trial of a woman named Marie Riviere, Accused of causing illness and death through her supposed magical powers, Riviere's trial was a stark reflection of the paranoia that gripped these early communities. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, Riviere was found guilty and sentenced to death, marking a chilling precedent in Canadian history. However, it wasn't just women who were targeted. Men, too, fell under suspicion. In 1679, a man named Jacques Gendron was accused of using witchcraft to poison his neighbor's livestock. While Gendron was eventually acquitted, his trial further illustrates the pervasive fear of witchcraft that permeated Canadian society during this period. These early cases of witchcraft reflect a time of fear and misunderstanding. They were born out of the settlers' struggle to make sense of their new world, a struggle that often manifested as fear of the supernatural. These fears, while unfounded, had very real and often tragic consequences for those accused. This was just the beginning of Canada's dark relationship with the supernatural. The fear of the unknown often leads to persecution, as seen in the infamous witch trials. In the heart of the 17th century, the fear of witchcraft was rampant across the globe, and Canada was no exception. The first recorded trial in Canada was that of a woman named Esther Cox. Esther's tale is one of the most infamous, her life engulfed in a series of paranormal events that led the community to believe she was a witch. The Cox trial set a precedent, instigating a wave of hysteria that would sweep across the nation. A 
Another significant trial was that of La Corriveau, whose real name was Marie-Joseph Corriveau. She was a French-Canadian woman convicted of murdering her second husband, a crime steeped in supernatural lore. The trial was infamous for its brutality, with Corriveau being sentenced to death by hanging in an iron cage, a punishment usually reserved for the most heinous of crimes. Then, there was the case of Angèle de Saint-Rémy, also known as La Voisin. She was a fortune teller and poisoner, accused of witchcraft and black magic. Her trial was a spectacle, with her confessing to multiple crimes, including the poisoning of several individuals. These trials were more than just singular events. They were reflections of the society's fear and misunderstanding of the unknown. They turned neighbors against each other, fueled by paranoia and superstition. The accused were often women, singled out for their unconventional behaviors or simply for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. These trials had a profound impact on society at the time. They incited fear and suspicion, causing communities to turn on themselves in a desperate attempt to purge the perceived evil among them. These events left a lasting mark on the nation, shaping its folklore and leaving a legacy of tales that still sent shivers down our spines. These trials marked a dark chapter in Canada's history, but the supernatural occurrences didn't stop there. Fast forward to the present day, where the supernatural continues to weave its spell. In the heart of urban landscapes and rural hideaways, witchcraft and the supernatural continue to thrive in contemporary Canada. Today, the practice of witchcraft might not be as clandestine as it was in the past, but it still holds an air of mystery that captivates the curious. Modern witchcraft in Canada is a diverse and vibrant community, with practices ranging from Wicca to neo-paganism, each with its own unique rituals and beliefs. These contemporary witches often use their craft as a form of self-empowerment and spiritual expression, far from the malevolent depictions of old. Crystal healing, herbal remedies, and divination are just a few of the practices that modern witches use to connect with the natural world and the spiritual realm. But it's not just the witches that keep the supernatural alive in Canada. Reports of supernatural occurrences continue to surface from across the country, from ghost sightings in the historic buildings of Quebec City to mysterious lights dancing in the northern skies. These tales of the unexplained not only ignite our imaginations, but also challenge our understanding of reality. Take, for instance, the eerie tales from the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel in Alberta, an establishment notorious for its ghostly residence. Or the enigmatic stories of the Ogopogo, a sea creature said to lurk in the depths of Lake Okanagan in British Columbia. And who could forget the cryptic tales of the Wendigo, a mythical creature deeply rooted in Algonquin folklore. Many theories have been proposed to explain these supernatural occurrences. Some suggest the presence of powerful energy fields, while others point to the influence of ancestral spirits. And then there are those who believe these occurrences are simply manifestations of our own subconscious fears and desires. Regardless of the explanations, one thing is clear. The supernatural continues to captivate our collective consciousness. It's a testament to our human desire to explore the unknown, to question the boundaries of our reality and to seek answers beyond the realm of the tangible. In the end, the allure of the supernatural lies as much in its mysteries as in its revelations. It invites us to look beyond what we know, to question and to wonder. And in the process, it reminds us that in spite of our technological advancements and scientific breakthroughs, there are still things in this world that defy explanation. Even in our modern age, the supernatural continues to hold a mysterious allure. The supernatural has left an indelible mark on Canadian culture. Our journey into the eerie realm of the supernatural would be incomplete without understanding its profound influence on Canada's cultural landscape. From the earliest indigenous legends to contemporary horror fiction, the supernatural has woven its way into the fabric of Canadian storytelling. Let's start with literature. The chilling tales of witchcraft and otherworldly occurrences have fueled the imaginations of many Canadian authors. Margaret Atwood's The Robber Bride, for instance, draws heavily on witchcraft imagery, blending it with modern themes to create a captivating narrative. Similarly,
Chris Monroe's Dance of the Happy Shades explores the eerie and the uncanny, setting the tone for much of her later work. Folklore, too, has been shaped by these supernatural influences. Indigenous peoples have long shared stories of shapeshifters, tricksters, and spirits, which are integral to their cultural and spiritual practices. These narratives often serve as cautionary tales or explanations for natural phenomena. In the realm of popular culture, the supernatural has found a home in Canadian cinema and television. The cult television series The X-Files, partially filmed in British Columbia, is a testament to the enduring fascination with the unknown. Meanwhile, films like The Witch delve into the dark history of witchcraft, creating chilling narratives that continue to captivate audiences. And let's not forget the countless festivals and tours that celebrate Canada's supernatural heritage. From the haunted walks in Ottawa to the Festival of Fear in Regina, these events allow participants to immerse themselves in the eerie and unexplainable, further solidifying the place of the supernatural in Canada's cultural identity. Whether it's through bone-chilling tales around a campfire, the pages of a gripping novel, or the eerie scenes of a horror film, the supernatural has a way of captivating us. It's a testament to the enduring power of these chilling tales that they continue to shape our literature, folklore, and popular culture. The supernatural continues to captivate us, a testament to the enduring power of these chilling tales. From the 17th century to the present day, the supernatural has been a part of Canada's history and culture. We've delved deep into the eerie past, tracing the origins of witchcraft in Canada, revisiting chilling trials, and exploring the modern manifestations of the supernatural. Each era brings its own unique charm to the mysterious and the unexplained. The fascination with the supernatural has endured, influencing literature, art, and even the way we celebrate holidays. It's a testament to the allure of the unknown, a constant reminder that there's more to our world than meets the eye. Remember, the supernatural is not just confined to the pages of a history book or a chilling campfire tale. It's a part of our culture, our folklore, and our everyday lives. It's a part of us. If you enjoyed this haunting journey through Canada's supernatural history, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly uploads. Stay spooky. Welcome back. You know, it's like I was saying in the beginning. Everybody knows about the Salem Witch Trials or the trials that took place in Northern Europe so many decades or centuries before. But what about these, these other places throughout the world and not just the countries themselves, but the villages, the townships, their fears? When Canada and the U.S. was was being formed, it was formed on the backs, the legends, the lifestyles, the cultures of so many hundreds and thousands of migrant families. And when they migrated to U.S. and Canada, they didn't only bring all of their worldly possessions, their families. They also brought with them their oral stories and their myths and legends. What is the truth behind the witch hunts? Not just, you know, in Canada, but throughout the world. We all know that the witch hunts in Salem were pretty much all based on the stories of two little girls. And people... They have formed their opinions about these two little girls and why they did what they done. <sighs> Even today, we have witch covens spread throughout the world. And some of these people are my friends. And frankly... When it comes to questions about certain things, they're the first ones I go to. The connection with nature, the connection with the energies. 
That is the mystery. But it's a mystery that I respect. As for the witch trials, just one more mystery that history left behind. But that's all we got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this look back at the, the, the history of witches and the supernatural in Canada. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. God bless you. God love you. We do. And we'll see you out there.